All right, and welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken, and today we're going to continue our Saving the Disaster campaign. It's still the Psionic Escalation, as we called it, episode number 10, and we're on our way overall to save uh, the campaign. We got avatar progress quite substantially reduced, and our next step was to make contact. We got enough intel available. The only reason why we did not do that so far has been because I don't remember why. Oh yeah, I think we wanted to finalize the scan here, which we just did. So next thing that's going to happen after this mission is we're going to expand. Anyways, let's focus on the mission, neutralize the targets. It's a dark VIP mission where you can Gain around 200 uh, supplies, but on top of that 80 intel, which is well taken. In order to uh, make sure that the mission will be successful, we kind of need to take our team with a few tired uh, folks with us. I think we're going to keep Genius uh, at home and instead take Bones with us. It means that the tired uh, soldiers might end up uh, taking some fatigue slash shaken damage but that is okay we have a difficult mission probably around 12 um, uh, 12 enemies but having bones here with us will certainly be good we got a nice um, a nice uh, soldier nice Templar with profit and uh, I need to refresh my memory because it has been a while I think I did not want to t uh, take any Psy operative with us. They should continue their training. So matter of fact, uh, we were actually running with three tired soldiers. Believe it or not, uh, in order to, le uh, to level up the troops, that's actually a strategy that would make sense. But it comes at a price. If we put uh, tired troops into combat, that also always means that they will be shaken afterwards. Let's jump right into the action and see if I can pull off a flawless victory. Good, and we landed. Let's take a look at the situation. We landed at the rooftop, which is per se my preferred location. The game gave us some high ground. That is fantastic. We got to extract the dark VIP from here. And we got to bring him over here. And we only got 12 rounds. That's a pretty long distance to cover. All right. Got to get to it. Let's start with bones. Jumping down here, it might reveal us. Jumping down here as well. And yeah, the problem is I can't see the civilians. So there is always a residual risk of just going down and being spotted out immediately. Luckily enough, that was not the case. Instead, we're going to move up and take a look at the enemies. Got ourselves an elite specter and two sectors over here. Not too bad. I think we can handle them quite easily. We're going to put forward Prophet, our Templar. Before we do so, let's be efficient. If you are taking the ones from uh, from from the back line first, that usually means they need to uh, run an extra extraordinary amount of um, of units. So you're often better off starting at the front and getting people into position. Sniper still continues to take the high ground. We can wait a few rounds with him. Uh, just need to be cognizant that we basically start to pull him in. And during his time when kind of in the last rounds, he will probably just need to sprint and sprint and sprint. And finally, Baller moves over to here. Got another patrol right there, which is fine. Scanning. Not a big problem. <laughs> Not a big problem. 
Good. So what is the enemy doing? Patrol is moving in. <clears throat> Got an advent mech and a purifier. That's an easy patrol to deal with. The other one did not move, however. Well, that is interesting, isn't it? So we got ourselves a frost bomb, which we could use over here. Or a frost bomb, which we could use over here, which would not hit everyone. I would say for the sake of just starting this out in the right fashion, How about we're using the frost bomb, keeping this pack at bay. We're going to uh, lose concealment, which is fine. There we go. And that means we're triggering that pack first. Got to deal with them. Don't think it's going to be a particularly dangerous pack. Matter of fact, I think we're going to be fine. This is going to be a bit of an issue, but also certainly not the end of the world. Good. A few things. First things first here. I can't just fully reach him. And we're not at that point yet where the Reaper can stay hidden um, with Silent Killer. So we want to get the Spectre first, the Elite Spectre, just so that he's off the table. I don't want to charge too far ahead, simply because there's no real need to expose us everything here could trigger yet another pack and like i said that's not uh, not necessarily needed at this point might as well give an aid protocol here to profit which is fine and we're just going to use our rocket launcher trying to make sure that we're not using too many of our resources there we go Nice fast lightning hand shot just to start uh, softening up uh, the mech. We don't want to go for the mech, we want to go for the spectre. But the lightning hand shot was for free. And we really wanted to um, make sure that we're using that blue screen rounds. Now, next up, profit. Profit would kill. The sector here. In order to kill him a hundred percent of the time, because it's only dealing nine to ten damage if he does not have any focus, we're just going to soften him up and then this uh, will give him a matter of fact two focus right uh, from the get go. Excellent turn for him. Uh, instead of parrying, I think we're going to move, actually. And I'll explain in a second why I think that that's the better idea. Not moving anywhere where, where, where we would trigger a, another pack. Unfortunately, we missed the, sec uh, the sector there. Moving up, and since we can't get over here, I'm almost contemplating whether we want to get up here. Probably not. Yeah, that's most likely not the best idea to just attack. I feel I'm a bit more drawn to leaving the Reaper in... Um, 
in his concealment for various reasons mainly because we don't need the uh, the raw attack damage at this point and more so we will need him next turn so moving just a tiny bit closer well I am not going to com uh, comment on that one that was unfortunate let's put it that way We could assume ill intent and think that the AI just knew we were um, there. But no, we're not going to do that. It is what it is. So much for our concealment. Shall we start this year calmly? Moving into full cover. I think what we should do is uh, getting rid of most of, so shredding them and making sure, well, none of them have cover. So scratch that point, which is simply going to mark them. And as we have marked them, kill them. Saving some grenades there. Setting up our comrade for another shot. I think um, our grenadier has an absolute fantastic position. Good, so much for the mind control. Very well. Well, even though we missed, uh, it is still a marked target. On the move. And as long as they are frozen, the enemies do not receive cover. Let's see what the hack theoretically would get us. is not too bad that here is nice maybe next round we're going to just give uh, give in for the 90% hack that's not bad for now we can simply start uh, to uh, to hit him all right and this should be a kill there we go, that's how you get two for one. So we killed five enemies overall. I think seven more to go. Got dual trooper plus Andromedon up here and another mech. That's atypical, the mech is never alone. Uh, the mech will come with another trooper. We can, by the way, explode this box here, if I'm not mistaken. Might be wrong, but it looks explodable. Moving closer to the actual targets and let's see what they're doing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is... It's ridiculous. I'm going to be honest and call bullshit on that one. It's the second time. I'm not even sure how that happened.
Okay, that deals with the overwatch. All right, one step at a time, shall we? One step at a time. So. Gosh, how that whole situation just turned from somewhat okay to not okay at all. Very nice hits. I think we're going to keep him and the frost grenade just a tiny bit longer. Good. We can, we could get rid of some of uh, the some of the cover down there could get rid of the mech i think eight points of damage plus falling damage should be enough okay oh that's even better we can finish with combat protocol two four six eight nine that's a hundred percent kill I think we're even going for that. A protocol into combat protocol. Did I just miscount by one? That's very unfortunate. That is indeed quite unfortunate. All right, so what else can we do? Let's just go through our options. Certainly that would be almost guaranteed one kill. But we could simply also move up and rent and get a kill. So if we're using frost bomb to take care of him, all right, what else do we need to do? That would take the Andromedon out. We can and probably should kill the mech. Yeah, we have no more extra actions, so it's really three actions. We can kill the, uh, let's say Bones here kills the mech, fair enough. Prophet can deal with either of the two, well, that's okay as well. And we're going to Frost Bomb, I think that's probably the way to go. Moon over here so that we are not no longer being flanked after the mech is being taken care of. There we go, mech is down. Fortunately, we do not yet have salvo elsewise. I could clear the entire field. So instead we're going to reload. Nice, we can even frost bomb both of them. Let's do that. Very nice. This world is 
All right, and although we can't kill him, we will get him into a position where the blade storm is most likely going to kill him. Perry prevents any further actions. There is the blade storm, and the blade storm kills. Nine more turn. I think we're doing fine. All right, moving up. This here should take care of the cover. And definitely some of uh, the... Some of the armor. We're continuing to just shred it completely. That's a critical hit, by the way. Good job. Free reload, thanks to our advanced outloader. We only got one target. Might as well pull the trigger on it. Bit of an overkill, but nonetheless good. Moving up. Hitting the Andromedon. And, well, is this here really going to give us a shot? Not sure. Target preview tells me yes. Well, there it is. And that's even a stun, so it's not going to move next turn. Elarium core, superior laser side, very nice. With parry, we got another round worth of blocking. And unfortunately, since it's stunned, uh, Bladstorm is not going to trigger, but that's okay. I, I don't mind too much. Seven rounds is a good time, I would say, to start moving. We're moving as far as we can. I'm not concerned about cover. A little bit of a pistol hit, or not. I said a little bit of a pistol hit. There we go. Thank you. Bones needs fresh ammo. And we can feed the kill to the Reaper. Good. Templar begins to move up. Just to double check if we're triggering something. The answer is no, which means the rest of the team can start moving up. Paula moves over and Genius over here moves over as well. Profit goes for Overwatch and we should be good to go. We're, there's definitely one last pack somewhere around here. We kill four plus three, that's seven plus two, that's nine. Means we're probably in for yet another pack. The VIP is here. What I'm now doing is I am checking for each of these tiles and I'm trying to see if they are accessible. If they are not, that means uh, that an enemy unit is standing in said tile. And that would give away the position of the last enemy. Good. It appears that there is no enemy in here. At least none that we have seen beforehand. We're not going to take him with us yet. The moment that we're subduing 
the v uh, dark vip reinforcements are going to start spawning in we're not going to do that yet instead what we're doing is we're moving as far up as possible trying to not go onto the roof at the moment mainly because i don't want to trigger another pack Reloading where possible. Overwatching where necessary. And I think we're going to use our Reaper to carry the dark VIP. That's an appropriate task for the Reaper. The Reaper without stealth is one of the lowest damage outputs. Might as well use him to carry the dark VIP. Moving the sniper forward. Time to do some subduing here. Surprise, surprise. Knockout time. Carrying the unit. Next round onwards, we're going to see reinforcements dropping in. See how I've been action efficient there. The unit, the Templar with two uh, turns has taken the hit, which costs a turn. And then the pickup. What? How's that even a thing? Then the pickup was done um, by the Reaper. But yeah, that spawning right middle in the uh, in the middle of the room, fantastic. Not sure how XCOM does it from time to time. I have definitely not foreseen that flank. Not at all. Hilarious, if you think about it. Holy moly, okay. Well, well, before we're going anywhere, let's get a couple of things straight, shall we? Number one. What the hell is happening here? Good, we got four more turns. Let's first and foremost just move to solid position. This guy here could move up, but I don't think that he can move up in a single turn and shoot at the same time thanks to the advanced grenade launcher we might be able to hit two birds with one stone here or with one grenade well Maybe not. Seems to be exclusive, mutually exclusive. But I know how we can deal with that. So, gotta make sure that we're getting the stun lancer because he can really 
rain on our parade and we don't want uh, that to happen. Unfortunately, there is the nearest entrance up here is over here and really charging through the building also doesn't seem plausible yeah so the Templar needs to end his turn over here meaning we got to attack and then uh, move back All right, plasma grenade. Let's move over here so that we're out of the way. Can this happen? sort of at least we can take away the cover of the stun lancer that's a start and not only that we can finally also get him that's good like it perfect all right let's start hitting the mech Very nice hit. It's exactly what we were looking for. Hitting the stun lancer just to set him up. By the way, we could kill the lancer. If someone else can kill the mech, that is. So again, combat protocol for sure would handle that. Very critical about the combat protocol, but gotta admit it worked pretty well during uh, this mission. We can be flanked easily here, just moving here. Uh, it's not going to work, so we got to pull back. I think we're going to play it fairly simple. Stun are down. Good. Getting three bonus attacks on the next uh, pack in even better. Comet protocol to finish this guy. And moving over here out of range, we're probably going to take one shot but that's not going to kill us. Could have played it a bit better by using that grenade before anything else, but overall it was fine. All right, that's one hit and we're getting a second one in. Templar is certainly doing some work here. Love it. And there is the deflect. Beautiful. Couldn't be scripted better. It could not be scripted better.
All right, maximizing, uh, maximizing the damage, which is really using the rest of our abilities. Ninety-five uh, percent shot missed. That is unfortunate. I tell you what, we are going to get closer to the exit. The sniper shot here is not worth the squeeze. Instead, we're just going to soften him up, which is fine. And time to get each and every single one of them. Good, I think we do have blue screen rounds. Yep, that is correct. We go it's here for you. putting the VIP down we need to extract soon <laughs> oh boy All right, we'll eventually get it. I do have an idea how to. We're just going to position ourselves right there. That'll cause um, the blade storm to not trigger on a shielded attack. Saiken, he played you for a fool. Pick up the unit and time to motor out of here. Good. The Templar is certainly doing some work here. Some faceless one just randomly appeared somewhere. Another one within the building. Okay, whatever. None of our concerns. Gotta extract the, uh, the units now. I told you 12 turns will be rather tight And next turn is going to be the last one. And then we get it. We really got a flawless one, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Good. Perfect. And we're out of here. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, and we're back. Look at that, three promotions. Prophet got himself the captain ring. Deep focus, oh, hell yeah. We're going to get deep focus. Three maximum focus is fantastic. Reflect is even better. And holy moly, he even got shadow step. This is the most busted Templar that I've seen so far. Like six out of six, 
genius level intellect can't get better it's quite literally the best uh templar that you could theoretically get good let's go for quick draw and we got ourselves a nice little 200 supplies 80 into We got fear of missed shots. Ooh, that's a bad trade. Well, we can eventually go uh, get rid of it as time passes. Good. But now, even more importantly, what are we going to do here? Supplies? No, thank you. We wanted to make contact. Yes, start making contact. And we wanted to get South America. So basically, we can make instantaneous contact afterwards. Got another covert action with minus two avatar project. That's perfect. Oh, look at that. We are slowly but surely getting there. Couple of new options. Shall we recruit a skirmisher? Wouldn't be too bad, but it's a starting soldier. could continue to basically improve the intel on uh, the other two health plus one and mobility plus one i think health plus one is reasonable putting putting our grenadier hmm yeah we can do that we got another grenadier here Baller could use some extra health. That is fine. And we're going to increase our Templar faction. Templar uh, Templars have really nice resistance orders. So yeah, why not? Might as well also recruit a skirmisher, by the way. But maybe whoever, uh, maybe the uh, player of this. Um, run just didn't like skirmishers i wouldn't know why because uh, you can only have one or at, at a maximum two anyways so there's really no reason not to take them should have uh, taken a look should have taken a look what the chosen are up to anyways next the retaliation strike soon going to come don't need the premium anymore Okay, and Bradford just told us um, we're going to be attacked very soon. Experimental grenades and heavy weapons are instantaneously created. Isn't bad. I like it. Psionic attacks. You know, let's take those. And from our skirmisher faction, I think we're going to take the instantaneous weapons because... I am intending to create some. When you missed, uh, when you missed uh, the chosen's, you can always just go back here. So the assassin is going to train, whilst the warlock is trying to use retribution. That's okay; they are not really ready yet. The Avatar project, however, is threatening, so we shouldn't, we definitely should not underestimate that. Got ourselves finally the best sniper in the game, the Darklands, and the Dark Claw is fantastic as well. So, next up, time for powered armor. I mentioned it earlier, it's great to have it, and we could get these supplies together in order to upgrade it. But let's continue making contact for now. Psionic uh, warriors are continuing to train. Inspire is a good ability. All negative traits removed from Kobayashi. That is perfect. Let's continue to remove additional traits. Putting Major Malcolm X in there. 
just to get rid of all of that uh, those negative traits and bingo we just got new chili and uh, on top of it we got ourselves the resistance network which means new contacts are made instantaneous so let's take a look we got 160 intel here that would give us access to uh, one uh, location could go to north america machine learning mm, that's okay i really want to go to the arctic the problem here is seems to be difficult to get there pretty sure there will be a connection between those two so we're either going in via new australia or via north america i think new australia is the way so instantly making contact great if we continue to create a uh, radio relay here that's only a hundred supplies and it will save us quite a bit of uh, intel going forward still got 260 intel so we're fine that means 80 plus 160 we can again make two jumps so that would be indonesia and india so yeah both of uh, both of those jumps would would definitely make sense and we do have access to a facility but before we're even doing the facility let's make sure that we're continuing to uh, fight back there is a retaliation mission upcoming this here is not yet solved guys it is not so i still need to make sure that uh, the uh, that the uh, economy of the safe game will become positive and if you Look at it, we're just barely at 140. Last month we were at a negative. So I gotta figure that one out. But for now, we're at the end of today's episode and we're going to see each other in the next episode. As always, if you like saving your disaster campaigns, consider sending one to me. I am taking all uh, really, really messed up campaigns, even as challenges. If you like the content of the channel, feel free to subscribe. Uh, you know how uh, much that means. It helps growing the channel and helps me to create even better content. See you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.